the first thing that we're going to come up on is we have uh, uh, cilantro and we have bok choy. If you know anything about my e-cookbook, bok choy is a real big deal. I'm also big into kale. Broccoli is loaded. Both of these vegetables come from the same family. It's loaded with something called indol 3 carbonyl which is phenomenally important for a lot of anti-cancer uh, effects. Um, I love broccoli. I usually, I will tell you, I probably eat more broccoli and kale than just about anything else. Okay, right now we are at the uh, sausage, bacon, starting to come into the meat aisle. And sausage is pretty controversial in paleo. I'm a big fan of sausage. I mean, in fact, a huge fan. I tend to buy most of my sausage jar from uh, uh, farmers who make it. And the reason why I've got to be really careful about some of the packaged sausages, many of them have uh, MSG in them. So you really need to look for it. Most people know that MSG, like we pull a package up here, I can look at it on the back to see if it's got any of the uh, problems. And this one's pretty good because it doesn't have any preservatives. I guess it's somewhat controversial in, in paleo. It's not controversial for me. Many people make a big deal out of the nitrates or nitrites. Most of the research that I've read on it uh, really doesn't make it a deal breaker for me. I tend to eat anywhere between three and four pounds of bacon a week at my house. Most of my bacon is pastured, so I don't have to worry about it, but most of the bacon in this store meets my standards. come down to the meat counter here you'll see uh, at Whole Foods they have a whole bunch of different options if you take a look at their strips here you can see the green labels these are all regional grass-fed suppliers and you can see the meat here in terms of the difference like if you look at the cuts of the grass-fed London broil you'll see that there's not a lot of uh, marbling or stripping in the middle of that meat and that's exactly what we're looking for if we take an example and come down here and look at say the same cut of meat, which is right down here, you can see all the marbling in the meat. That's all the omega-6 fat. That's all the grains that this, this cow ate compared to the meat down here that doesn't have any of that. And obviously this is the kind of meat that we want to eat so we can stay healthy. Uh, it'd be an ideal kind of piece of meat. Look at that bison roast back there. You're not gonna find a fresh cut of meat like that except any place like Whole Foods. All right, what we have here, this is a Whole Foods seafood counter. My absolute favorite fish, which I come to Whole Foods a lot, is right here, Chilean sea bass. And sea bass, I make a special Sauternes white butter cream sauce, and that's the white fish right there. It is absolutely to die for. In fact, anytime my son comes home from college, first thing he asks me is, Dad, let's go to Whole Foods and make sea bass with my special Sauternes sauce. It's really really quite good and dynamite and for those people who need to get a, a cheaper fish one that is not a budget breaker you have tilapia and catfish they're both bottom feeders uh, normally they aren't fish that I go to but I would say for a family that's trying to stretch a budget they're absolutely phenomenal choices in fact far better choices than grain-fed meat so this is something I think that you know you should consider looking into by the potato aisle and I'm gonna be very honest with you Dr. Cruz is not a potato fan it's a glycoalkaloid uh, in the, the surface skin these are actually Japanese yams um, the other things that I do think that we can eat especially now in the uh, in the spring and the summer you can use the garnet sweet potatoes or sweet potatoes and you can see Whole Foods has got a variety of different ones here is a garnet sweet potato it's perfectly fine. You can roast these, you can bake them, you can make mash out of them. There's a lot of things you can do with them. Um, and then we just have the regular straight sweet potatoes that are right over here. These are probably the number one starch that I'll probably eat in the summertime. All right, we're now in my favorite aisle, which is the coconut oil aisle. And most of you know that I'm a huge fan of Nutiva coconut oil. Uh, this is what I would call a, an, a weekend pack in my house. We usually have the big gallon buckets. Uh, we use quite a bit of coconut oil. Everybody in my family loves it. I put this in a lot of different things that I make. I love it. 
Um, and it's, it's non-GMO. We don't have to worry about anything being genetically modified. Um, it's a fine company. Uh, I think it's just something you should do. And in the e-cookbook, in Optimal Coffee, we use Nativa coconut oil in there.